and there he goes. Very nice. Now you know, if you're not planning on keeping fish, the best way to catch them or release them is to literally shake them off without touching them. So all I did was lift that fish up so you could see it. Now to do that, you can see I'm just using needle nose pliers. These are six inch, but these actually have the beak on them, which really helps. That beak is designed to help you open split rings. But what I like about it is that when you grab the hook, even if it slips, the hook isn't gonna come off because you've got that little bit of a beak. You can see that we're using stainless steel hooks because we're fishing in salt water. And especially for the pinks, you don't need a very large fly. This would be, a, you could use a fly. This would be considered a little hoochie. You can see it there with about, uh, would you say that's three feet, Aaron? Yep. And then a flasher. And you said before we started rigging up that if you were rigging up, and this is your first time on the West Coast, that's the color combination you'd it be is. using, right? It is my first time on the West Coast. Hey, I always heard that pinks and reds were, were good out here, but yeah. until you get out here and try it, you never know. It has a lot to do with what the fish are feeding on. You know, when you get into the larger species of salmon, like the Chinook salmon, they feed on larger bait fish, like herring and probably even small salmon and sand lances, which are called needlefish. But when you get into the smaller species of salmon, like the pink salmon, which there's millions of them, they feed a lot on shrimp. So when this is going through the water, it probably either looks like a little herring, but most likely a shrimp going through the water. That's why they nail it.